Today, uh, we will narrow down the project ideas, and I definitely want you guys to talk to each other and to uh, generate uh, scenarios. Assume that you can cheat as much as possible. You can just use a joystick, and if you are doing agricultural robot, and just uh, push your joystick and move around somewhere, okay, and simplify the situation, etc. Actually, we will need to know four things. The first is called edge detection. So we definitely want to find the boundary of the yellow or the white lines, okay? And the second step, we want to know that, okay, the white is on my right-hand side and the, the uh, yellow is on my left-hand side. We need to figure out the color space. And three, uh, we want to find the line segments. We definitely want to find, okay, this is the segment on the lens and this will uh, help us to generate the lamp pole. Finally, because the detection happened uh, in the 2D uh, image uh, plan, we want to do a transformation from 2D to the real world. This is uh, one uh, ideal scenario that we try to figure out uh, where are the edge pixels in uh, an image. We can see something over here. Those are something we want, right? But we also see something we don't want. For example, uh, who can tell me what's, where are those come from? Chaoping的接缝, exactly. So you can see that especially, uh, actually we buy a two uh, slightly different colors of the, the tiles. So that you can see uh, this is a, a little bit uh, gray and this is black. And uh, our edge detector uh, figure out the difference and then uh, also find the edges, edge pixels uh, in the image. To do so, the Canon uh, edge detection is the most uh, popular uh, method uh, to do this task. And before that, we want to cover just a little bit about the convolution filter and the Sobo filter. It's a, a, the introduction for the convolution filter. So essentially, this is the input I this is the input image, then I is typically the intensity value, okay? And this is the output. And when, whenever you see something like this, it's a typical symbol for the operator uh, convolution, okay? And uh, a filter may look like this. There are several different types of convolution filters. The filters can be used to uh, smooth the, uh, the image or make it a blur, okay? Or find the edges, okay? There are several different kinds of uh, filters and depending on what you want, you can apply the filter. This is actually the equation to show the, the, the convolution, the, the operation. But probably this is not that uh, straightforward to, to know what's happening. We will take a very simple, very uh, basic uh, filter called box filter or uh, rectangular uh, filter. And we will just try to smooth the pixels by averaging the values in the filter. This will be very easy to understand. The gray ones are zeros, the whites are 90s. Okay, so the 90s, uh, we use 90 for a reason, right? So we have a, a averaging a filter in the box, essentially just uh, average the value. And if we have 90, that would be very straightforward, very easy to understand. This one, we will try to focus on the center of those uh, nine uh, pixels. And then we will apply this filter to those nine uh, values. So essentially, that would be zero plus zero plus zeros, and et cetera, and nine times, right? And then uh, divided by nine. So this one will be the value here. Oh, it's a zero, right? Okay, so the next step, I, I showed the answer already, so not very exciting. But essentially, uh, we try to do a summation of those guys and divide it by, by nine. Okay, so let's just uh, try to average the, the sum uh, of the intensity value. Okay, so we will get a 10 over here. 
yeah, that's why we want to put uh, 90s. Okay. And how about next? What's the, the next? What will be the value here? 20. Yes, 20. Okay. And how about next one? 30. Okay. And so on. 30 again, right? Okay, so we, we try to train our brain to be a, a convolution filter right now. Okay, this is a quiz. So how about this? 50, right? I heard someone say 50. Okay. Okay, how about this? 90. Okay, yes. So, right, so if uh, you have even not very decent CPU, you can do this very quickly. And if you can write some CUDA code, some uh, GPU programming, you can do this uh, very, very quickly. We know that what's happened for the uh, convolution uh, filter. This is a, a input image, and we try to use a, a kernel. You can consider it the same as a, a convolution filter. And in the previous example, uh, the size of the filter is 3 by 3. Right. And if you have a kernel uh, 20 by 20, and you can probably imagine that the, the lady here, who knows her name? She's a famous like, in a computer vision textbook. Lena, yes, thank you. Yeah, so Lena will become uh, too blurry and maybe even more beautiful. So this is uh, the smoothing uh, by uh, averaging. So I guess you guys know what's happening for the, the convolution filter. Okay, so we want to uh, dig into the second topic uh, that you need to know to understand the, the uh, edge detection. So uh, if we change the filter to something like this and this, let's see some examples. And essentially, the two filters give you the vertical and horizontal gradient uh, changes. Okay, and we can use uh, those two to calculate the gradient uh, magnitude and gradient uh, orientation. So the gradient, essentially, uh, you can, uh, I hope you can still see the blue arrow here. So essentially, the, the length of the blue is the magnitude, and the orientation is the uh, it's also shown here, uh, pointing at the more, more or less in the center of the contours. This is another input uh, example. And when you apply the uh, Sobo filter, and you can see something like, like this. Okay. And this is actually pretty close to what we want already. Right? In our first uh, example, we see the edges. Maybe we can take a look at those uh, pixels. Okay, you can see that uh, after we apply the Sobo filter, you can see the lines here or maybe here or maybe somewhere over here. The, the thickness of the, the lines are somehow different, right? And then this will somewhat cause some problems. So if you have a very thick lines, and the, yeah, at some point, if you want to fit it to line segment, it will become, uh, will cause some problem. Okay, but don't worry. We have the, the canning uh, edge uh, detection. This is uh, just uh, what I just talked about. We may have a white, very the, uh, thick uh, lines. Uh, because of high uh, gradient magnitude. Okay, this is one important uh, step uh, in the canning that can just uh, try to find the, the maximum value uh, of those high gradients. Suppose uh, we have the grayscale image. So this is the I, X, Y, right? And uh, we have the in intensity value for the same image. So you can see uh, 38 over here. So actually the black one will be zero, and the white will be uh, 255. And you can see some gradients here. And as a like, toy example, we definitely want to do something uh, very simple. Okay, 
So we just uh, use uh, uh, two filters, and the P and Q. And P is actually, the, you can see the design of the filter minus 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, minus fil uh, 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. This will help us to find the vertical one, right? And this will help us to find the, the horizontal. Who can tell me how to get uh, minus 0 0.5 here? Please uh, remember the P and Q for now, OK? And essentially, we want to do the same as the uh, average filter we just did. And we want to do this 220 times minus 0 0.5, right? And then minus 209 times 0 0.5, right? And then plus 213 times 0 0.5 and 215 times uh, 0 0.5. So that's for uh, P. Okay, so when we put uh, P, this filter, over here, okay, and we will get the value there. Okay, and how about Q? The Q is easy, then we, we just uh, do the same thing, uh, apply minus 0 0.5 to those two pixels and 0 0.5 to those two pixels. So you will get this, all right? OK, so you can definitely verify those uh, numbers. Uh, but that you can get the, the idea uh, here. And we do that consecutively, and we could get those values. OK, and for, for, for those guys, uh, because we, when we uh, apply a filter here, we will get something like out of boundary. So the typical way is just put uh, zeros. Okay, so uh, we call it a padding. Okay, so whenever you don't have the, the boundary value, maybe some people will pad the same value of the, the boundaries. Okay, and now we can compute uh, m and theta. So m is the magnitude. So this is actually also straightforward. If we go back one uh, slide, we just try to use this value, square, and then plus this value, again, squared, and then do a square root on it. Okay, so this is how we get this value. Okay, and the theta, we can do the same thing. We can find the uh, arc uh, tangent of Q and P. Someone is do the calculation. I like it. <laughs> okay, that's great. So that we could get those val the magnitudes as well as the, the angles. And this is uh, uh, of the non-maximal suppression. Uh, if we go back, uh, back and forth, so if we take a look at the left-hand side, so you can see that some of the values uh, remains, right? But some of the values were uh, replaced by uh, zeros. So this is uh, uh, how we apply the suppression. Okay, so the rule is that uh, when the value of the magnitude uh, m i j is less than either of the m value in those two numbering positions, set it to zero. So if we go back, maybe uh, we just pick this one. And let's go back. And you can see that the neighbors uh, 4.5, uh, 23, and 21. Okay, so we will keep uh, this one. We will keep this value. Otherwise, uh, it's uh, smaller than uh, its neighbors. We will just set it to zero. This is kind of uh, uh, straightforward. We can remove lots of pixels, but we haven't really used the orientation information yet for the uh, theta value. So for example, 96 degree, uh, 203 uh, degrees, we want to quantize those value in a few uh, categories. Okay, so uh, we can uh, just uh, use the degrees here. Uh, whenever it is inside uh, these angles, we put ones in the value, and uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. So we try to quantize the, the theta into uh, those categories. 
And then uh, we want to find those guys, like they have the same gradient orientation. So you can see on your left hand side uh, and your right hand side, for example, we set a, a threshold uh, T30 equal to 30. And oh, sorry, this is just to remove those intensity values. All right, so this is our final output. Okay, so this is the, the edge pixels and those edge uh, locations in original image. One thing very, very important is that the, the edge pixels, the thickness will be uh, always one. Okay, that, that's the fundamental uh, difference. We want to do the uh, non-minimum suppression compared to uh, Sobo filters. The other good thing is that later on, uh, we want to fit those edge pixels into line segment. We also need the orientation as well. Okay, and you may, you may find that, wow, that's a lot of work, right? So I, if I implement everything by myself, then that could take lot of, lots of time. But the, the good thing is that the Ducky Tongue, we already prepared everything for you. So yeah, you can see the edge images from the original one. And you can see, surprisingly, the code is very, very simple, just one line. Okay, you can see this one. And this is not very hard to understand. Import CV2 and NumPy as MP, it just uh, have a name for it. And this one is for uh, drawing. And this is kind of similar to uh, MATLAB. This is ex extremely similar to uh, MATLAB. Okay, and those uh, one, two, three, four, those are just uh, the syntax uh, to draw the original uh, image and the edge image. Okay, and the actual computation happened here. Okay, just one line. Yes, yeah, very exciting. If you dig into the Ducky Town repo, you can see that the many of the complex uh, algorithm can be actually quite simple. In the first uh, step, uh, canning, we didn't really use any color information. Right? We only use the intensity and we find the magnitude and the orientation. But in this uh, context, we want to find the yellow and the uh, uh, white lines. For the color space, for example, we want to find yellow and find uh, white. So one very, very simple implementation could be what's the uh, RGB value to show yellow and what's the RGB value to show white and we just use RGB, okay? But any problem to just use RGB? Let me show you something first. Tell me uh, if this color and this color, are they the same colors? Pretty much, pretty close, right? Okay, no? Yes, no, yes. Okay, how about this? Let me try to put the rectangle back. This one and this one, kind of different, right? But if we have the mask on, it looks kind of similar. Okay, so that, that's a kind of the limitation of the uh, color representation. And this is especially for uh, human eyes. Okay, but this is an example uh, want to tell us that the illumination so suppose uh, you have different light condition, different uh, light source. If your light is uh, yellow light, then white will look kind of different from the real white uh, in your camera. Okay, so because of the, the illumination changes, we want to do some transformation to get rid of this, and at least make it more robust. What we did in Ducky Town, so uh, we uh, want to convert the RGB uh, color space into uh, HSV, okay? And the H means uh, hue, saturation, and value, or, or someone also have a, a HSI, or it called intensity. You can see, uh, especially for the color, the hue is, uh, it can uh, make our color detector much more robust because when we convert it to uh, hue, 
you can see the color next to red will be kind of together, right? And the blue, you can see the red will be kind of together and the blue here and uh, some other uh, colors. Okay, so let's take a look at the example. Okay, so this is, uh, we want to combine the, the Canon uh, Edge pixels from previous uh, section and put together with the color so that this is uh, an uh, intermediate output of the Canon plus color. So right now I only show you the output for now, but again, um, in Python, it will be just uh, one line, maybe one or two lines command to do this, the color space uh, transformation. Okay, so yeah, so don't be worried too much about uh, the coding or that if you don't know the detail too much, uh, don't worry. Uh, as long as you know the theory, uh, just a little bit, just the right amount, then uh, we can uh, make this happen. So we, we already have the edge pixels. Uh, we also have the color space to get uh, yellow or white edge pixels. And now we want to uh, fit those um, edge pixels into line segments. And one popular uh, method is called uh, Hof transform. And actually there are some other methods, for example, the uh, least square. Right? If you go back to the linear algebra and uh, you want to fit uh, several points to a line, for example. Okay, so and today we will introduce a uh, Hopf transform. So this is a uh, different uh, scenarios. Actually Hopf transform can be used to detect not just lines, but also uh, circles or other shapes. One thing you need to remember is that it's a voting uh, mechanism. For example, every pixel, it will vote to an, uh, a different uh, coordinate system, okay? And we have an input and an output uh, space, okay? And the winner, which uh, received the most votes, uh, will uh, actually uh, what you want. So this is an example. So we want to fit a line. This is the x, y coordinates. So one very uh, straightforward idea would be uh, we just use the slope as well as the intercept, right? So we have the M and we have a C over here. Okay, so we have a line over here. And now we want to create a uh, output space. The space is based on M and C. A line will become a point in the space, right? And how about a point? A point will become a line in this uh, space, okay? And if we uh, go back to previous slide, uh, this is a voting uh, mechanism. And the input space is uh, this, X and Y, and the output is M and C. You can see one, two, three, and we have a vote here, and this is the winner. Okay, and this point is actually represent the line over here. Yeah, and actually we are done. So the question is that any problem in this uh, MC space, vertical line. So if we have a vertical line in XY space, what will happen? M is uh, inf infinity, right? Okay, yes, so, right. So it cannot uh, represent uh, vertical lines. And also the, the orientation of the line, if we uh, get into vertical, the change will become very, very fast. Is there any uh, alternative output space we can use? So now the output space is not M and C anymore. We want to figure out something else. So this is one typical way to do this. So this, uh, we will use the theta and the r. Okay, and you can, you can see that, suppose this is a line here, then we have a r and we have a theta. Okay, and this will become a one point in this space. 
Suppose we want to show all the lines lie across the x0 and y0. We will have to draw uh, all the possible lines. So wh what we are trying to do is that we want to uh, represent a point in the theta and r uh, space. So what the space will become. Th this is a uh, the theta and this is the, the r. So actually uh, each uh, point will become a sine wave in the output space. We have three points and the three point will become three uh, sine wave and the intersection here will be a line. So let's try uh, this is uh, xy And this is uh, uh, R and theta space. Okay. And uh, a line. Okay. Okay. A line here will be what in, in, in this uh, space? A point, okay. So can can anyone follow this? A line in this space is a point over here. Okay. So the example is that uh, we have uh, the first line, and it's a uh, theta uh, one r one. Okay. And for example. Uh, then theta one r one will become a point over here, right? So is that does that make sense? Okay, and okay. So a point. So what we want to figure out a point. So what will become in the r theta space, right? And we just uh, we just uh, see the the answer. It's a sine wave. Okay, but how to generate this uh, sine wave? Okay, so now we have uh, three lines, right? And each line, for example, uh, in this uh, space, so this is R and theta, and we have uh, R1, theta1, one, and we have uh, R2, theta2, two, and maybe uh, R3. Okay. Okay. So if we want to draw the sine wave, then what should we do? Suppose we have more lines across the point. Then actually we can we can fill this in. Okay, so this is the basic idea. Uh, we try to find all possible lines that could come across the x0 and y0. And it will turn out that a point will become a, a sine wave. Okay. And then later on, uh, uh, because uh, uh, we have uh, uh, we have uh, three uh, points, so we will find three sine waves, right? And then there is a winner uh, over here. Okay, and this will become uh, find us a point in this uh, space, and actually find a line in this uh, space. Okay, and luckily, again, we have several uh, implementation already in OpenCV. So uh, this one, uh, the, the function is called uh, Hof lines, and it will use exactly uh, this uh, system, the polar coordinate system. Okay, 
And there is a second implementation in Ducky Tang. Uh, we actually use this uh, half line uh, P. And this is uh, an, an implementation called a probabilistic half transform. And the reason to use uh, this function is that it's faster. Okay, you can imagine that in this case, uh, whenever we have uh, one uh, edge pixel, we will have to find lots of lines, right, in order to generate the sine wave. So that for each pixel, there will be, uh, uh, the computation will become uh, much more uh, intensive. So depending on how many edge pixels you have, you will have to find all possible lines, draw a sine wave, and then uh, second, the second edge pixel and find the second sine wave, and then later on find the, uh, the winner of the votes so that you can find the lines. So that's the implementation in the uh, half lines, all right? And because uh, this is a more computational expensive, so there is a, a second implementation here. So it just uh, try to find some uh, sample, sampling points. And essentially the second implementation will give us actually fairly uh, good and very close to the exact uh, result of the half lines. Okay, and in OpenCV, uh, there are some other imp implementations for different shapes. So for example, you want to find a coin. If you want your ducky bar to find coins on the ground, <laughs> so maybe you can use uh, this one. All right, and we come to the last part, ground projection. So uh, in previous uh, section, uh, we used the uh, Hof P, uh, probabilistic Hof transform to find uh, line segments, but they are on the image plane. We want to project those lines to the ground. So uh, we will start with uh, some pinhole uh, camera. Essentially, uh, this is the image plane and this is the a real object. We assume that this is a pinhole camera and we have those uh, projections here. Okay, and again, the perspective projection, we want to project 3D uh, objects uh, onto a 2D uh, surface, just like uh, this candle and put it here. So this is a typical camera uh, parameters. This is called a focal point in X direction and uh, Y direction. And C, X, C, Y, they are uh, principal uh, points okay, in X and Y uh, direction. Okay, and this is a skew uh, parameter. And, but we typically don't use uh, this uh, skew parameter too much. As you can see in the ducky bot, uh, it's a fish eye camera so that uh, the image will look something like, uh, probably like this, right? And then we need to do a uh, on distortion based on the camera uh, parameters. If you put your ducky bot uh, in front of a um, checkerboard, and you can see something like this. So this is a step D, right? Okay. And then this is the original image, and this is the ideal on distortion image uh, after we do the calibration. So for the camera calibration, we actually need to do it in two steps. Okay, the first step is called intrinsic uh, matrix. So that's, we want to um, do the, find the fx, fy, cx, uh, cy, and s. Okay, that's for intrinsic calibration. And the second one is called uh, extrinsic uh, matrix. And the extrinsic is try to find the relative uh, transformation from the image plan to the 3D world. So you will need a checkerboard and uh, the calibration procedure is basically that you have a few uh, known points in the 3D world, capital X, Y, and Z, and then you have the image coordinates uh, in the pixel uh, X, Y, and 1. Okay, and the, the basic idea here would be that 
you, you have your checkerboard and you put it in front of your uh, ducky bot and move it in different uh, position. You will have to fill in uh, four bars, right? So X, Y, and I think also maybe also distance. So we will, we will want to uh, sample uh, lots of uh, uh, checkerboard uh, images. Okay, in order to uh, calculate the uh, parameters. So when you, uh, when you do the camera calibration, you will have to show it in different angles. So something like this. Okay, and typically uh, we will need uh, 20 to 30. So in order to get a good calibration. But uh, in uh, your uh, step D, so you will, you will have a few bars showing that uh, the program already collect enough information about something. Um, so this is the algorithm. We will just uh, go over uh, this part. So essentially, this is an optimization problem. But don't worry, uh, because the Ducky Town Step D already covered this part. So you just need to know the, the basic idea. Okay. So first of all, uh, we will compute the, the initial intrinsic uh, parameters. And as I said, we will uh, ignore sortion for now and estimate the initial pulse and do, um, well, nonlinear optimization. Uh, this is not very clear uh, here, but uh, you just need to know that there are several, uh, several views over here and each view will become one of the a camera view over here. And then uh, you want to try to uh, optimize the positions, relative position to the, the uh, checkerboard. Finally, it will run an LM uh, algorithm here. And so that in your ducky bot, it will freeze for, for a, few, a few minutes, right? Maybe at least five minutes in order to do the calibration. So when you uh, reach uh, step D, then if you finish the collecting images, then don't, don't, don't freak out if it just a phrase because the computation here is uh, quite expensive. So now we want to do the extrinsic calibration. Okay, so again, uh, the extrinsic is here. So typically uh, the R is a three by three uh, matrix and T is a one by three uh, matrix. And uh, we want to find a uh, homography uh, between uh, two uh, surfaces. So this is what you are going to do. We print this uh, in a, a A4 uh, page. Uh, and then actually we already know what's the relative distance from those two points to every single corners in the checkerboard. That's why uh, we know how to do calibration automatically. Okay, so if you print this uh, page in a different size, that will be a different story. So yeah, please uh, put your ducky bot uh, in front of the, this uh, checkerboard, and then it will do uh, calculate the homography for you. So this is the, exactly the same uh, application that you can see if you put your car to a reverse, some of the car will show a uh, uh, image and to and also it will draw some lines so that to to show you that uh, this is uh, how far away from your cars right and this is a uh, for example the red line over here is actually look like this and the yellow line uh, look like this okay so this is the exact sample of uh, what we are doing for extrinsic camera calibration so the homography edge here is that whenever you have a pixel in your 2D, you will know it, that's the 3D coordinates on the ground, right? So any assumptions here? Or, or let me ask you a question. Suppose you move your camera, so uh, you can see the ducky bar camera. Uh, can I borrow one, maybe? Okay, maybe this one. You, you can see that. This camera is uh, somehow pointing down a little bit, right? So if you change this uh, uh, camera mount a little bit, maybe put it up a little bit, 
then uh, will you get the same uh, homography? No? Okay. How about uh, if, you, if you have a, a slope, like a, have a ramp on the ground? What will happen? The point you get uh, in the uh, 3D uh, will become uh, a little bit closer to you. Right. Okay. So the basic uh, assumption here is that uh, first the camera is uh, fixed, the angles, especially the pitch, okay, and and row. Okay. And the ground is always uh, flat. Okay. So actually, this will kind of true at this uh, in Dakita. Okay. Otherwise, you will need a depth. Uh, camera, for example, the LiDAR or some other uh, serial camera in order to, to know the exact uh, homography. Okay, but for the Ducky Tongue and in many general cases, one, just one homography after you do extrinsic camera calibration will be good enough. Again, we, we already have the camera calibration uh, step D uh, available. And after you finish uh, this uh, step, you will get two files. One is uh, about um, camera intrinsic, and the other is a uh, camera extrinsic. Okay, and let's take a look at uh, what the file looks like. So this is the uh, intrinsic after you do the camera intrinsic calibration. And the, uh, this is uh, the camera matrix. So this is the, the metric I just showed you. Uh, so it will be something like this. Oh, this is uh, Fx0, uh, uh, Cx, okay, something like this. And the last one, last one should be one, right? Okay. Okay, so this, uh, the camera matrix here, uh, this is uh, three point, uh, 316, uh, this is the fx, and you will get a 0. And then cx, uh, this is a 320. And this 0 is this. And this is a fy, this is a cx, and then 0, 0, 001. OK? And uh, the distortion uh, coefficients, uh, they are here. So this is uh, in intrinsic uh, matrix. And this is the uh, extrinsic. So essentially, uh, this is a three by three uh, matrix.